But but on a serious note, and then we have to go after this. Um, you talk about this as as, as couple, you know, coupling, and also in, in shooting yep. your jobs and your profession. Yep. But this also it ties back to what we were talking about yesterday, and we'll talk about with uh, our our next guest. Um, this ties back to it could have disastrous results with the Boy Scouts and putting in girls and not giving young men the ability to draw away, to pull away, to have some recharge time, especially when they're young and they don't know where they are on the agreeableness scale. They don't necessarily understand the gender differences and we're throwing them in a pup tent out there together telling them they're all the same. Um, what we're being taught right now, what's being taught in schools is the exact opposite of this, that everyone is interchangeable. Well, look, look, one thing we do have to clear up here and maybe we can stop with this. You hear a lot of well, a lot of nonsense, and I've had a lot of criticism directed towards me for making right. these claims too. Look, the scientific evidence with regards to gender differences in personality and interest is quite clear, and it's very, very reliable and valid, and I'll, I'll tell you why. So basically, the big differences between men and women are on agreeableness and, and negative emotion, neuroticism. So women are higher in agreeableness and they're higher in negative emotion. And I suspect the reason for that is, is that they have to be strongly predisposed to take care of infants. Right. And so you have to be somewhat self-sacrificing and you have to be sensitive to distress because otherwise you're not going to respond to a helpless infant fast enough and in a self-sacrificing enough manner. Now, that isn't necessarily a wiring pattern that makes you all that capable of dealing with rather rough adult men. Mm -hmm. But there's always trade-offs in terms of your specialization. Okay, so now how do we know that these differences exist? Well, the first is this temperament personality model was computer derived, statistically derived. It, it wasn't based on any a priori ideological theory. theory. It was extracted out from massive surveys of descriptive phrases and adjectives and sentences applied to tens of thousands of people in many, many different countries. So it's been replicated cross-culturally. It's a very stable model. Right. So, and what we've, what's found is that those differences exist cross-culturally. Okay, but that doesn't demonstrate that the differences have a biological basis. They could still be cultural. So scientists did the next experiment, which was, okay, so imagine that you rank order countries by how egalitarian their social policies are. So countries like the Scandinavian countries are right up at the top. Right. Okay, so then the hypothesis would be if the personality differences were sociocultural in origin, then as societies became more egalitarian in their social policies, the differences between men and women would shrink. Right, stands to reason. Okay, that's exactly the opposite of what happened. Mm -hmm. The more egalitarian the society, the larger the personality differences, <clears throat> the larger the personality differences between men and women. Now, and you might ask, well, why is that reliable? Maybe right-wing psychologists invented this data to push their agenda forward. Yes, the throngs but of them. What I'd like to point out, well, there are no right-wing psychologists, <laughs> right? Right. I'm dead serious about that. Yeah. The people who put forward these hypotheses weren't attempting to demonstrate that there were temperament differences between men and women. They were just looking. And it wasn't in accord with their desired worldview, A, to find that there were differences, and B, to find that as societies became more egalitarian, the differences got larger. Right. No one expected that, but that's how it turned out. That is fascinating, Captain. And I know I've heard you talk about that, that there's an inverse correlation directly there. And uh, it, it, it really is remarkable. And that's why we are in some uncharted territory here, kind of like we were with feminism in the 70s. And we've seen some results now, some chickens coming home to roost. We're seeing it go a little bit further now where there are no more separated boys clubs Weird and girls clubs and we'll see 15 years from now how that works out.